post cancer as far as I mean, oh, there was a, some study way back. There was a study published in I think New England Journal of Medicine 20 years ago. Initial thought that maybe coffee drink increased risk of pancreatic cancer, but that study turned out not to be true. So as far as I know, coffee drinking is safe, and uh, you could have a uh, black coffee if you know add a little bit of milk. I don't think that really doesn't make uh, any difference. So coffee is safe to drink. The next question is for Dr. An. What does it mean that H1N1 virus contains genes from Asian pigs, birds, and man? Does it mean it will affect birds, pigs, birds, and man, but not other animals? What do these animals generally have in common in exclusion to other animals? Whoever asked that question, that's, that is a great question. Um, the, they don't actually know what it means that the virus actually is made up of genetic material from viruses that affect those different animals. It's a, it is an area of very intense research today. What I can tell you is that H1N1 is now being diagnosed in dogs, cats, and ferrets. So it appears that this virus is highly infectious to a number of different animals. So far, it doesn't look like it causes a lot of illness in dogs, cats, and ferrets. Uh, and we don't know if people can get H1N1 from dogs, cats, and ferrets just yet. So whoever asked that question, it's a great question. We're going to learn a lot more in the coming months. So please come to the next KCCP meeting for an update. <laughs> the next question is for Dr. Hyun. I hear that calcium is hard to absorb. Are there ways to help absorption? Well, most importantly, uh, most of the calcium doesn't get absorbed everything we take. So only partial is in uh, absorbed, that's why we have to take so much. And the vitamin D helps absorption of calcium. So taking with vitamin D is helpful. And uh, we need to take actually more than we need in the body. So 1500 milligram is actually more than we need. But we take that much to get part of them. Most of the product probably get absorbed less than 50%. A question for Dr. Lee. Um, would you co uh, comment on dental whitening? Is it bad for your teeth? Well, uh, actually, um, dental whitening is, uh, has been done uh, for the past about five to six years. Um, I have not known any cases that has caused problems. Um, usually the problem is a, um, you know, once it's done uh, properly and then and, and, uh, and, Proper, proper amount of a uh, treatment, um, it really has not caused any problems. Um, I have seen some patients that keep coming back uh, and uh, have more white things done. Uh, in fact, I've seen some patients, um, they go from office to office because they, uh, um, some patients want their teeth extremely white and their current dentist, um, the treating dentist, they uh, actually refuse to do any more white things. Um, so as long as you follow the directions and everything should be extremely safe. Uh, the next question is for Dr. Rowe. How can you estimate the amount of acid formation depending on food in general? Um, I think that uh, different people make different amounts of acid, and you also have to consider how much acid you eat and drink. So um, I think your stomach usually produces acid any time you eat or drink anything. That's the basic function. Um, as soon as something goes into your stomach, your stomach produces acid, which is why sometimes um, even drinking water at a particular time can even seem to cause some acid. So um, part of that is that your stomach makes a certain amount of acid. A lot of things that can irritate the stomach and make more acid are certain medications like aspirin and Advil. And large amounts of acidic foods and drinks. 
um, things like excess amounts of coffee, tea, alcohol, uh, those are very irritating to the stomach and they can keep producing more acid. Uh, the next question is for Dr. Yi. Considering that a lot more Koreans smoke than white Americans, the rate of lung cancer for white American lung cancer rate is higher. It is a bit hard to understand. Does that mean that smoking is not the primary cause of lung cancer? Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Good question. 90% of the lung cancer are caused by smoking. There are about 10% of the cancers not caused by smoking, lung cancer that is. Could be caused by radon gas and also we don't know uh, some other cause, but also there's been a higher incidence of uh, people among non-smokers, there's high incidence of lung cancer. I have seen many patients, let's say in their 50s and 60s, who never smoke, but developed a lung cancer. And we really do not know why that's happening. And, uh, but you know, in general, as I mentioned earlier, I think Koreans in, in general, incidence of cancer among Koreans are lower, it's a half way than U.S. population. And we quite don't know what that, why that is, but certainly, but obviously the lung cancer rate, I think, I, I, my guess, is the lung cancer rate itself uh, is lower because of that. And so I do not know whether some other food, again, Korean food has an impact on that. It's not quite clear. But it's clear that 90% of lung cancer goes by smoking. The next question is for Dr. An. Does the H1N1 vaccine contain mercury, and if so, is it still safe? The answer to that question is, it's going to depend upon the manufacturer. Uh, some of the H1N1 uh, vaccines will contain an adjuvant that can contain mercury. Some are also mercury-free. So. If you're considering getting the vaccine, ask the nurse or the doctor who is administering it whether there is mercury present, because there are some versions that have it and there are some that do not. Leave it to Leslie to ask the, uh, the, the really uh, controversial question. Um, I will share with you my personal point of view, which is based on a very large uh, study that was run over the past 20 years. Um, it is my understanding and it's my personal view after reading the study that mercury um, in the vaccines uh, is not and has not been shown to be linked with uh, any clinical disease in people. Some of you may have heard about a possible link between mercury in vaccines and autism or increasing autism rates in children. Uh, after this study came out, actually earlier this year, I think it was first published in February, um, it was fairly convincing data, pretty powerful data that showed that there is not a link between uh, the mercury in va childhood vaccines uh, and autism or for that matter, any other diseases. Now, I should qualify my response because it is true that some people uh, may have a reaction to any vaccine, okay? Fortunately, it's extremely rare, but those reactions are typically due to proteins that are contained within the vaccine. It, it doesn't have anything to do with mercury um, that might be in the vaccine. So in those rare instances where you hear about a reaction to a vaccine, it's often because of protein that's contained within the vaccine. 